As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from our research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. All right, let's let's talk about it then, guys. Here, here, there's a, obviously a million news stories I could show. There's been a million takes on this. Uh, let me just bring up sort of the simple one here. It's New York Times. Microsoft will buy Activision Blizzard, betting $70 billion on the future of games. Uh, this is Microsoft's biggest deal ever. Uh, what's not mentioned, I don't think this article mentioned some of the details of the deal, so I will, I will just give them to you. They are, uh, they're, Microsoft's paying $95 a share, which is 45% over the company's stock price before the announcement. I think it's like about a 15% premium to the stock price today. Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, uh, the idea here, or at least the, what's being reported or what's being said is supposedly Bobby's going to stay on until the deal is complete. It's most likely then that he will step down. And uh, obviously the most, you know, obviously Phil Spencer will then control this much larger group, Phil Spencer, who is currently the head of gaming at Microsoft. Um, before we dive into some of the auxiliary story, because there's a lot of other stories around this, right? Like how Microsoft has messaged this, uh, you know, what's going to happen to Bobby. There's all kinds of other sort of smaller stories. I just want to get your guys' first reaction in terms of you love this or you hate this from a business standpoint in terms of the acquisition itself. Forget about sort of everything else around it. Um Jeff, I know you have strong thoughts on this, so maybe we start with yeah, you. Yeah, I'll start. I'll start. I appreciate it. Um, I, I mean, I, I really like it. First, I, I guess I want to kind of say what I, I don't think this acquisition is about because I've heard two sort of prevailing narratives that I, I, I generally don't think are, are the case. Uh, so I just want to get that out of the way to start. One, I, I don't think this is about the metaverse. Uh, you know, we'll talk a lot more about this on the Meta Business Podcast, but I don't think that that's what this is about. Is Microsoft plotting this is part of their metaverse strategy? You know, this was a gaming acquisition. They did talk about metaverse a little bit in the press release, but fundamentally, I think this is a gaming acquisition. Second thing, I don't think this acquisition was about is making Call of Duty exclusive to Xbox. Um, I, you know, that might be a hot take. It might not. I'm actually curious to hear everyone else's thoughts. Um, I just don't think the numbers make sense, and they they even talked about it a bit. There was a number of quotes kind of in the, the transcript and that they, the call that they did talking about how they want to have uh, the gaming community be open and, and it's all about community and, and kind of non-exclusivity. Uh, part of that might have just been a head nod so they don't run into any antitrust issues. But I, I genuinely don't think the plan is to make Call of Duty exclusive to Xbox. And I say Xbox very specifically. I do think this whole thing is about Game Pass. Now, I, I think they they will have Call of Duty come out day one, you know, on Xbox or sorry, on Game Pass, which is something that they've done with with a lot of their big franchises, obviously Halo, uh, Gears of War. So I think this is all about getting content for for the Game Pass subscription. And um, they they snuck into the announcement that they now have 25 million Game Pass subscribers, which is a, a pretty astonishing number. Um, I think it's up, you know, from single digit millions just about a year or two ago. Um, so I think that this is, that's what this is all about. Those are my first, first thoughts. I have a million others, but I'll pass the line. Anyone want to get first thoughts in here before I, I push back a bit on Jeff? Cause I'm, I am curious to push back. Just, just offer whether or not we like it or not. You mean? Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, you know, I, I love it. My favorite Microsoft news of the last year was when they acquired Bethesda, uh, last year, you know, in the middle of last year, cause I'm a big Bethesda guy and who better to take the helm, I think, than Microsoft, which really, I mean, I've been a day one Xbox fan and, and I just love what, what they've done, uh, you know, so far ahead of everyone else in gaming. We talked about the Connect on the show a while ago and what that did for streamers and just for people kind of in, in games that, that monitor your movement. 
Um, when I saw this, I thought, well, culturally, how great is that? Because, you know, they were having a lot of problems and this is a company that I know a lot of people over at Blizzard in particular that express how excited they were to, for this acquisition and how hopeful they are for what that future brings. Um, but, you know, and then I thought, and I saw all these memes, uh, uh, if you guys remember that James Franco meme where he's like, all I have left is Spider-Man and people were putting Sony across his forehead. Um, you know, not not only did they just win the console wars, I think they won the the gaming wars, the streaming wars, the content creation wars. I just see this opening so many doors uh, for Microsoft in terms of what they can do with these properties, with this IP, with these teams uh fundamentally and, and from a foundational perspective that not only are they going to integrate it into game pass but you know this isn't a 70 billion dollar game pass acquisition right this is going to go into many more things whether it's generating spin-off shows uh sp sp you know new games i don't think any of us think they're going to cut and make it an exclusive i would be hard pressed to find someone that thinks of that i just this is massive this isn't a small acquisition and I'm just massively excited about it. I don't know who wouldn't think this is cool personally. Lindsay, you think this is not cool, right? I'm like kind of, I guess, I don't know. I, I guess I'm neutral towards this. Whenever two big companies come together, sometimes it's just two big companies coming together. I, I don't see this as like a, this is definitely going to be like a huge flashbang, like, changing inflection point however i will say activision really needed something um so i'm i'm excited from the aspect of i'm hoping that there's some serious changes in how they operate there we've been talking about that for a while i don't know that adding on microsoft is going to be the thing that makes that happen um and i also am very skeptical of what the antitrust review and what the ftc is going to say about it so i'm kind of cautious about how it's actually going to proceed and what that's going to look like. Jeff had a great tweet thread on that and why there shouldn't really be any antitrust uh, scrutiny, but there will be, of course, because it's big tech. I um, will say, to your point, Lindsay, there will not only will be, yeah. but um, the market is pricing it in, right? Like Microsoft mm -hmm. offered $95 a share. Um, Activision Blizzard, I think as of today, is still trading at like 85 bucks a share or something. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's not trading at that acquisition, which it should, right? Because if you know you're going to get $95 for your share of Activision Blizzard, why wouldn't you be willing to pay $86 or $87 for it? That's a no-brainer. It's because there's some fear that the deal won't close, right? Fundamentally, this is why it's still trading under its, its acquisition price. Um, I guess that leads me sort of to my second question for you guys is, did they pay too much here, right? It was the price a good one. If you remember on a previous live stream, you know, after the Bethesda acquisition happened, we were talking about Microsoft, I think, buying Discord, right? For 10 billion or 12 billion or whatever the number was. And I think a lot of the discussion was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Like if Microsoft spends 20 billion on gaming, like this is, this is, so, this is uh, so crazy for them, right? Talk about a major commitment to the space. I think they took that one and they felt, well, we can one up business of esports. We'll 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 make a seventy billion dollar acquisition. Um, was the price right here, right? The, and and Jeff, I guess let me push this back onto you. You said this is all about Game Pass, right? Activision Blizzard's doing what, like eight billion in revenue today, seven eight billion in revenue today. Um, if all of this moves to Game Pass, you know, we could probably do the back of the envelope math to figure out how many new net new subscribers they would need to get to justify an acquisition of this size or at least stay the same from a revenue standpoint, right? Like if we convert every Activision Blizzard game to something on Game Pass, um, in that context, does this feel like maybe they paid too much or do you think the price was right? Well, it's an interesting question just at the core because there's so many different business models within Activision. Like is WoW going to all of a sudden go to Game Pass and now there won't be the monthly subscription. Like I, I'm not sure that they necessarily immediately have to do that. Um, you also have a, a fair chunk of that revenue is coming from from King, uh, which which is is really not applicable to Game Pass just because it's free to play. Um, which is another interesting part of the acquisition. I think got overlooked a little bit um, just because of the focus on Game Pass and Call of Duty. But act, or uh, Microsoft really has no presence in mobile. 
and uh, call it, the king kind of gives them kind of the first foothold in mobile. So that that was something that I think is potentially overlooked, but interesting. Um, to get to the heart of your question, you know, I haven't done the back of the envelope math. Um, it is it is an interesting one. They paid a pretty fair premium. Um, good again, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a stand for Bobby um, in terms of what he's done on the business side of things, not necessarily the cultural side, of, of course, but. Um, good on him for getting uh, $95 in cash. 45% premium is pretty serious. I think pretty rich. They would have come out there with a $75 cash offer. You know, like I'm not too sure a lot of Activision shareholders wouldn't have taken that. Uh, so to go to to get 95, um, I, th- I considering I'm not sure how many other bidders there were, like credible bidders. Uh, good on good on Bobby and good on the negotiate. You know, the board for Activision good for Activision shareholders. Whether it's too much, I don't know. I, there's a fair amount of synergies you could imagine they could they could pull out. Clearly, they're not going to have to pay the 30% tax to Microsoft for their game. So that right there is probably you know, a couple hundred million dollars. Bobby's not going to work there anymore. So that's a hundred million dollars a year. You're you know, 150 million. Off, yeah. <laughs> cut, cut that off the off the <laughs> off the top. You know, so so there's a lot of a lot of obviously I'm, I'm joking a little bit, but there's there's a decent number of synergies right off the bat that uh you know kind of make the the multiple come down even further. You take away a lot of the functions internally, like you're not gonna have a finance department, tax department, like a lot of the stuff that's there. You could you could easily find if with take two and um Zynga they were talking about five hundred million of synergies. I, I think you could you or sorry, I think it was a hundred million of synergies. You could see 250, you know, 300 million annual synergies pretty easily, which which will do a lot to take down the the multiple that they paid. 